Hey, this is Rashawn Myers, Main Event Sports Show, coming to you live right outside beautiful Papa John's Cardinal Stadium as we get ready for ESPN Game Day and the big showdown between the Florida State Seminoles number two in the country taking on the number 10 University of Louisville Cardinals in Haven. I tell you what, man, absolutely amazing and unbelievable just the buzz going on. We already have people getting their tailgates set up. We have folks kind of driving around, milling around. They actually ran this off because they said, you know what, people were taking pictures all night. We have to secure it and lock it down to make sure everything is together. They don't want anybody stealing coach corsos, headgear, and anything else. But you can tell that this is definitely a huge, huge uh, event going on right now. It is a huge event. Let me tell you something right now. This is what Google has been waiting for. This is why we joined the ACC. This is what you get. Number two, Florida State. Number 10, University of Louisville. College game day. It doesn't get any bigger than this. It is so big. Like you said, we got people out, out right now, 11 o'clock at night. They're out right now tailgating. The RVs will already start pulling up. We got people lined up, ready to go. The gates don't open at 4 o'clock in the morning, and people are already out right now getting ready to go. I've never seen a game that have this much hype at the University of Louisville. This outdoes the 2006 game when we beat, I think that was like number three, number four ranked. Uh, West Virginia yeah. on a Thursday night blackout. That was probably the most exciting game in global history, one of the biggest games in global history. This is even bigger. Yeah, I tell you what, I mean, you know, when you talk about the biggest games, I, I don't know if this is the biggest game in global history, just because, you know, the, I think the ramifications of the Louisville Rutgers game when they had an opportunity to possibly play for a national championship is probably the biggest game in global history, but this is definitely one of the biggest home games and one of the biggest regular season games, just because of what it means in terms of prestige. And, you know, when ESPN game day is here for the first time ever, um, and just everything surrounding the game, I mean, you have celebrities, people coming in from out of town, Louisville is literally, um, on every break, every commercial break, they're on ESPN talking about. So definitely, this kind of signifies Louisville's change and their ascension uh, as a football program. So it's exciting. I cannot wait to see what happens tomorrow, but I do want to kind of just talk about keys to the game. First of all, what do you see as the biggest keys to the game or what should we look for from Louisville if they want to get a victory? You know, everybody's talked about Lamar Jackson. We know he's going to bring the table. Everybody's talking about Florida State's defense. Florida State's wide receiver is the four or five star talent that Florida State has up and down the roster. However, I think this game is going to come down to Louisville's wide receivers. Louisville's wide receivers hold a key to victory. I said that because of this. Against Syracuse, even though we beat Syracuse 62 to 28, Louisville had over 10 drops in that game. Now, a lot of those drops kept Syracuse in the game. So the whole second and third quarter, Syracuse in the game because of drops and turnovers all by the wide receivers. We even saw the same thing in Charlotte's game. A lot of turnovers and a lot of drop passes. Lula is minus six, excuse me, minus three for the year in turnovers, but they have six turnovers overall. Lula cannot turn the ball over against Florida State, number one. Number two, they cannot have those drive-killing drops. We saw several drive-killing drops against Syracuse. If Louisville drops the ball on a consistent base on third down, they don't convert, or if they turn the ball over more than twice, game over. Yeah, and I think that's a huge key. And then I think the biggest key for me, of course, the offensive line for Louisville had probably its best game as a unit under this second Bobby Petrino regime last week at Syracuse. I need to see them continue to do that. Uh, definitely a huge step up in competition. When you talk about the Florida State defensive line, some are calling this the, maybe the most talented defensive line that Florida State's had in at least the last 15 years. Um, so I think how they stand up and those guys uh, can handle that pass rush. Now they did get helped out by the fact that uh, Josh Sweat, uh, the superstar sophomore, uh, former number one overall player in his recruiting class is not in town right now. There are questions about maybe he came in town tonight or will come in early tomorrow and play. I don't think if he made the team, if he didn't make the team bus, I just don't see how he's gonna end up coming in late and being a factor. Um, so I, I don't think he will be there, but how that Florida State line stacks up and stands up against that Louisville offensive front is gonna go a long way to telling the tale. They did not play well in the first half of the Ole Miss game and was dominant in the second half of that game. Walker, uh, the big defensive end, had four sacks versus Ole Miss, a team that runs a read option, which is not easy to do. Um, so I think that, to me, is the other biggest key 
um, for Louisville. Now, let me ask you from the Florida State side, um, if your state, what do you want to do or what do they need to do uh, to kind of corral Lamar Jackson, who, uh, you know, obviously is public enemy number one for them? Well, the hard part is how, how, how do you stop him? Now that he's become a pocket passer, he's infinitely more dangerous than he was last year when the first time he played. The guy that would have stopped him kind of would have shadowed him. Because at first I thought they're going to play us kind of like Denver played uh, the Carolina Panthers. When you have Von Miller shadow everything that Camden was doing, and Camden couldn't do anything. He couldn't run. They got adequate pressure on him. They was able to slow him down and stop him. I kind of thought Florida State was going to do that. Now the big man's out with a knee injury. So now it's going to be kind of different. So now I expect him to run, do more, not a, an overall pass rush, but more kind of like a containment type of rush. Stay in their gaps, stay in their lanes, and slowly close in on Lamar, keep him in the pocket, keep him from rushing, make him beat you with his arm, and then trust uh, the talented secondary. This is supposed to be one of the most uh, talented secondaries that Florida State's ever had. Now, there was everything. they got lit up by Ole Miss in the first half. Of course, Jimbo does what he always does. He's like the Yoda of halftime adjustments. The man's a marvelous halftime adjustment. So that's what I think Florida State is going to do on defense. They're going to keep Lamar contained, try to squeeze in, keep him in the pocket, collapse the pocket on him, and rush forward and beat him. If, if they have to commit more than forward, Florida State's in trouble defensively. I would agree with that. And I think the other guy, of course, is a, a Dalvin Cook uh, in terms of offensively. I think that getting Cook involved, he's not had a big game so far. They said he put on about 15 pounds of muscle this offseason to kind of get stronger. Um, and it seems like it's maybe slowed him down a little bit. He's not had that explosiveness that we know him for. And I think uh, Florida State's going to make a big effort to try to get Dalvin going early because I don't think Jimbo, while he's good at coming back in the second half, so I don't think they want to continue uh, to uh, get behind. I just think that that's a recipe um, for disaster, especially when you're dealing with a redshirt freshman quarterback in Francois. You don't want to continually put that young man in those type of positions because at the end of the day, a freshman is going to make mistakes. He's coming into his first true road game environment. Tomorrow, it's going to be a very, very hostile crowd at Papa John's Cardinal Stadium. And if they get down 14, 21 points, I'm sorry, this kid is not Jameis Winston. Not yet. He's very talented. Uh, you know, he can run a lot better than Winston ever could. But I don't know if he's going to play perfect football and, and you know, who would expect him to. Uh, so we'll have to wait and see what happens with that. I expect it to be a very exciting game. I don't think it's going to be a defensive struggle as it was last year before, of course, Florida State went out and just went bananas in the second half of, of last year's game. Um, I think it's going to be a kind of an up and down uh, haymaker, uh, you know, type of fight. So it'll be very interesting to see what happens. So, uh, hey, let me get a score prediction from you and a player of the game. I don't think the score is going to be as high as what people think. Wow. I think the score is actually going to be a lot low. A lot of people think in 40s, 50s. I don't think it's going to be that way. And a lot of it depends on the weather. Because we're supposed to have rain and thunderstorms. So it's really wet. And our ball gets really wet. We really haven't seen Lamar or Francois throw the ball in a lot of live action when it's wet. So that may kind of slow down a lot of deep passing routes and things like that. It actually may lead to more low of a drops than we want to see. Maybe a lower scoring game, maybe the low 30s. I think you may see this game turn out. If Luba has less than five drops and can stay one turnover less, Luba wins the game. Luba has more than five drops, more than two turnovers, Luba's going to lose. My prediction, I, I'm leaning towards Luba actually to win the game. I think they're going to hold on to the ball a little bit better than they have the first two games because they have real competition now. They're going to concentrate harder because the Syracuse really want to concentrate. They're trying to run before they caught the ball. They knew they had Syracuse out man and out gun, so they got kind of like a day. So Florida State, I think we're going to give them all the concentration that we can muster. With the rain, with the crowd, Louisville's going to squeak it out. It's going to be a squeak. 35-32. I like that. I like that. And for me, um, I think that ultimately at the end of the day, I think Francois is going to play very well. He's going to show why he's one of the top rated kids coming out of high school last year uh, before sitting out his red shirt year. 
that being said, I think his first true road game, uh, that Louisville pass rush, I think my MVP of the game is going to be that Louisville front seven. I think between D'Angelo Brown, Devontae Fields, James Hearns, those guys being able to constantly put pressure on Francois and the ability of Josh Harvey Clemens to kind of be that spy on Dalvin Cook and try to, uh, you know, make things difficult on him. I think that Louisville defense is going to um, – take care of business. I think Florida State will make just enough mistakes, maybe a turnover or two uh, in this hostile environment. I don't think it's going to be a clean game, but I do think Louisville is going to reach the 40-point plateau. I'm going to pick Louisville to win at 42-28, um, and I think they'll get a late touchdown to kind of put the game away, but I do expect it to be an excellent game, and I cannot wait uh, for the pageantry of everything that's going to happen. Before before we go, you have my key to the game, and I kind of want to say this to the very end. Because last year he had a lot of missed tackles and he got beat for a lot of deep passes. I'm talking about Josh Harvey Clemens. This is going to be his redemption game. I'm going to tell you why. Because now he's playing uh, a mixed role between outside linebacker and safety. That I think we was going to try to use that to confuse a young quarterback. Because you used to see him play safety. He's lined up as a safety. He's numbered as a safety. But yet he can come in and play outside linebacker. That, I think, in a couple formation shifts, Louisville's going to try to uh, try to confuse Florida State's young quarterback. Josh Harvey Clemens is going to be actually the key to the game. Yeah, I, I like that. I think that Harvey Clemens, his, his ability to play uh, and that versatility to be down in the box as well as Rome in the secondary and make you know, plays on the ball is going to be huge for Louisville. And I think that this defense, you know, some people got a little bit afraid or shaken by what they saw from Syracuse. Uh, because they did give up a couple of touchdowns. I think that had more to do uh, with just being tired. They had to play a lot of snaps. Louisville had some very quick drives that had a lot to do with it. I do think that Harvey Clemens, uh, as well as D'Angelo Brown, uh, and the rest of those guys are going to have a huge game tomorrow. The four horsemen, as I like to call them, are going to show up. I expect Stacey Thomas to have a big game as well. D. Smith will be have to sit the first half um, because of the targeting penalty in the Syracuse game. Uh, but I think they have enough depth there uh, to be able to take up for that. Might see a little bit of Kane pass tomorrow, uh, from what I understand. Uh, but all in all, I think it's going to be a great day for the university. I think it's going to be a great day, a great day for college football. The, top, the first top 10 showdown of the year overall in college football. It's going to be a great Saturday afternoon, uh, and I can't wait to see what happens. If you aren't able uh, to get out here, catch us live, make sure you check out the Main Event Sports Show Saturday, 6 to 7 p.m., only on 104.7. WLOU, the new home of the Tom Jordan Morning Show, and we will have a special edition of the Main Event Sports Show on 1450 AM, the Sports Buzz, Sunday morning from 9 to 11 AM. So make sure you check that out as well. We'll get all your reactions to everything goes and going on in, to, in tomorrow's game on both shows. So make sure you check that out. And uh, what about the uh, app? And also, download the app. All you gotta do is search Main Event Sports and all your app stores will be there. The first one pops up. Download the app. You can watch this podcast. You'll watch us throughout the game. It's game day. We're gonna be here right early, 8 o'clock, interviewing folks on the Corso, talking to Kirk Perks Street. We're gonna be in the stadium talking to everybody. You don't wanna miss it. Download the app, get the video, listen to us live Saturday and Sunday morning on 1450 Sports Buzz. This is Hayden Harrington, Rashawn Myers with the Main Event Sports Show. And like you like to end every video podcast, without any struggle, there is no progress. Peace.